Okay, again today uh, I'm going to do more of a technique of using gradient mesh. And, uh, you know, the gradient mesh is very kind of not easy to do with a portrait. Um, biggest challenge, of, of course, is getting flesh tone, flesh tone colors. Hey, dude, I'm trying to talk up here. Shh. Yeah, you, in the back row. Still talking. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with a new file. And I'm going to paste. What size? It's up to you. Try and choose something that's a little bit bigger than the 8.5 by 11. You know, that's quite small. Um, the other thing you want to, might want to consider is making sure what color mode you're in. If you're going to have this color printed out, most color inks use cyan, magenta, yellow, black. So I would start with the CMYK. Mm -hmm. I might make my artboard a little bigger. Try and start with a high resolution. Try not to use the... the um, Don't use the image trace. Image trace just does never turns out right, especially with a portrait. Okay, so you want to try and draw your own. So uh, let's talk about uh, doing gradient mesh. Again, one of the things I'm going to do is duplicate the picture so I could use it to select color. So I'm going to duplicate this picture next to it. So one I'm going to draw on top, the other one I'm going to use to select the colors with the eyedropper so that I can get the same colors that are in the photo. Uh, one technique that I've seen before in the past of using the gradient mesh is just to start with one big gradient mesh and then build upon that with other objects over top of it. So, um, again, one technique is to start with one giant mesh and then get it close to what you want and then add pieces over top. One of the biggest challenges is this one's going to be nose. I might make the actual nose a separate object over top of the main face. How do I get that so it blends with the underneath it is the biggest challenge. A lot of the posters you'll see if somebody used the gradient mesh technique and is following this is it looks like they just cut out a nose and pasted it on there, right? Because it's a separate object. How do I get that object if you use separate objects to blend with the ones underneath it? Very difficult to do with the gradient mesh, but there is some technique. One probably the the technique that I use the most is using a transparency so it blends with it. Or in addition, you can use the blending modes to get it to blend also. So here we go. Again, I like to do one giant gradient mesh. And so to start, I'm going to use the pen tool. And I'm going to just going to go around and around and around, just around. Kind of like what we did with the fruit. Remember with the fruit where we did the whole fruit? as one big mesh. Try and use the least amount of points. I'm not going to worry about the ear. Okay. So one big mesh, or one big shape, okay. Next, I'm going to choose a color that is nice and kind of even. So I'm going to choose like a middle color, like that, okay. So then we have some that are lighter and some that are darker. So next, uh, again, I'm going to use the gradient mesh. So when I use the gradient mesh tool, which is this one right here, I'm kind of trying to make decisions. I'm going to just try and get nice, even colors, or nice kind of soft colors that are similar. Don't try and get highlights. We'll do the highlights later. Oh, screen is not fitting here. Hold on, i got to get my screen to fit. Okay, there we go. So, uh, um, oh, geez, I got to get rid of all this stuff. I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't need that. Okay, again, I'm going to use the eyedropper. I've already sucked up a color. I'm going to use the gradient mesh tool, which is this one right here. 
and we have kind of a darker area on this side. Notice how it's starting to follow the area. It's a little darker here. And then again, if you click along a line when you're using the gradient mesh, it, it won't make as many dots, if you remember that. And so that's pretty good right there. And I'll probably put one right about here. So what I'm trying to do now is I put my points down. I'm just going to go and, and use the eyedropper and suck up some color. Again, I'm just looking for nice, even tones. So I'm going to use this white direct selection. I'm going to click on here. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, and I'm going to go and click on a color. Okay. In addition, I'm going to use the white selection tool, click on a dot, go over here, use the eyedropper tool, and suck up a color. There we go. And so I can continually do that. This is more of a darker. Again, use the eyedropper tool, suck up a color. I'm going to do that again. This is all dark on this side. Eyedropper tool, suck up a color. And of course, all the edges are kind of dark too. So I'm going to go here, use the eyedropper tool, suck up the dark color there. There we go. And then, whoosh, I know we didn't even think about the finger yet. That's not working. There we go. So again, I'm just getting colors, putting in. So maybe a little highlight here. It's a little brighter maybe here. And then he has a brighter one up here. And there we go. So again, a sort of a nice kind of base tone. Notice how the shape is kind of in a facial shape there. Okay. Nice kind of simple. Oh, probably one more right there. I want to make that one a dark one right there. This one. Oops, is there a dark one there? Is there one here I could make dark? No. There's got to be one there somewhere. Hold on, i got to zoom in here. You sure that's not a colored dot? No. I don't know. For some reason, it's not giving me a color here. This one is, though. I guess I'm stuck with that. Okay. So I got some nice sort of base colors. Now, Jeff, I made it. Okay, good. So next, let's talk about, uh, uh, I'm going to hide that right now. So again, as you're working, you can go to your layers window, and you can actually go, and I'm going to open up my layers here. And I'm going to lock these so I don't mess with them and I'm gonna hide this one okay there we go so I have my base I'm gonna stop now I'm gonna start making the other shapes over top so the biggest challenge right now will be the nose it's always the hardest how I'm gonna actually make the nose as a different shape and then try and blend it with what's underneath it so um, eyebrows are easily done using a brush a brush so we can use a paintbrush for that. Okay, we'll talk about that. Uh, I also, um, you know, let, let's just let's not do the eyebrows yet. Let's do the shapes that I'm talking about. So let's just do an eye, and then we'll do nose. So let's do an eye right here. Again, I'm going to just add a shape here to give me kind of a, a dark area, kind of like that. Okay, now that doesn't look very good yet, but that's okay. I'm going to turn on my mesh again. It's underneath it. Okay, I'm going to give it a, a darker color. I'm going to try and stick with the same colors that I've already had. Then what I'm going to do is either feather or blur it. Remember the two. T remember the clouds, right? We blurred it, right? Okay, we could do that. Or if we remember from last class, I used something called feather. Both of those are located under the effects window. And if you go over here to where it says style is where you got feather. Feather will blend the edges. And you'll notice that I can increase. Oh, not too far. I went too high. Something like that. And then let's click off for a moment. Let's deselect it. 
And so if we zoom out, you can get that. The other thing you would do with a shape like that is then you could go with your opacity. And so it's very subtle. Okay, or you can even actually add a little blur to it if you want more. So again, just adding a darker shape like that. Okay, now I'm going to go. So you're building up shapes. Again, building up shapes. Uh, let me turn that off. Let's go back. Uh, again, you're going to want to do some dark shapes in there. Some dark shapes in there. So we got one shape so far. Um, let's go with uh, a little bit of a darker shape here for the uh, really detail here. And again, I'm going to select the color. I can start using some of the color over here. And again, another technique would be to blur this or um, and again, if I turn this off for just now, oh, not that what I want. Um, you can see it's just subtle there if I add it in there. Okay, just adding slowly adding detail. Oh, how did I get? Oh, turn that off. So slowly adding detail. Um, probably add another one here. Another uh, different color, possibly here. Again, blur that. Okay, so again, uh, there's three shapes all right there, but they're all very subtle. And if you look, you'll see it's starting to come alive. It's starting to come alive. Once you start adding a little bit more detail in there, so gradient mesh for the basic shapes for the colors. Um, notice how you, it's not the whole eye. Now, if I was going to do an eye, eyes are a little bit difficult. Let's, let's talk about eye, and then we'll get to the nose. Uh, there's many different techniques for doing eyes. Um, of course, the glint that we talked about last time. Um, you know, if it's a perfect eye, you can use an ellipse if you want. And of course, we need the color. And remember, there's multiple colors in the eye. So you need a little texture in there. Um, how you can do a little texture in the eye is um, a couple different ways of doing it. I've used lines before. Remember how we did the um, the flower petal and went around? I've done that with eyes before where I've used the line. And then give it some color. And then rotated it. Ah, oh, I'll do that. <laughs> Look at that. But then you, you don't leave it like that. It's just it's just a, a way to start it. It's just a starting point. And select them all. And of course, use your famous blur. And um, you can give it a color if you want. If it's not so, you can get a little blue in there. There we go. How's that? Okay, so the little sparkle in the line. Right? So I've done that successfully, just putting a line and rotating around just like we did with the flower petal. Now we're going to put the little black uh, iris. Iris is the black part, right? Pupil, that's it, and then a glint. 
and then so uh, we got to get the pupil in there. And that's going to be uh, just a pure black. And then the last thing is a, a glint. I need to get a glint in there. A glint. I, to make a glint, I would just make a circle, make it all white. Um, take that and take that and oh, give me, come on, move. And then. Uh, and then blur that. Oops. Blur. Okay, so a nice glint in there. And then, um, of course, we don't. We need it to be kind of covered up here. So um, let's add this in there. Okay, so now we need to kind of cut it out a little bit. It needs a little bit more shapes over top of it. Uh, so we need to kind of let's just go with a this. Let's go with a little bit of there we go. Let's give that a color. Let's send that backwards. Oh, but we got needed to keep be over top of the eye. I don't know how I'm going to do the cover up the eye. Uh, I guess we could use this to cut the eye. I don't know. Where's this? But we want to move all these up here. How about that? So think of your order of things. There we go. And then, of course, this really dark part kind of along the edge here. Oh, and I want to do that. Great. So, a really dark part along the edge here for some eyelashes. Oh, come on. Oh, really? There you go. No, I want black. And blur that just briefly a little bit. There we go. Uh, and then, of course, the white part of the eye. Um, you have to deal with that. And I would give that a color. And of course, that that's not really bright. No, it's not bright enough. And then let's rearrange that. There we go. And then give that some texture. Uh, some other ways you can add texture to your eye might be to um, um, do some of the effects that we did before where you would duplicate it. Um, there's a w one way to duplicate an object is to drag it in next to the trash can here. So you have two of them right here, right next to the trash can. This duplicates a layer. And then if you remember, we were applying different effects. You can apply different effects over here, like the, um, um, I like the film grain. That gives some, some noise to it. So it adds a little noise to it. And of course, it doesn't have to be super dotty like that. We can just make it subtle. But you know, it's the eye, the, the, the white part of the eye actually has some texture to it. It's not just simple big white shape. 
So adding just like we did with the fruit, add a little texture by using noise. And of course then you can add more shapes to the outside. Of course there's going to be shapes that go around the outside here. And give that a color. And then blur that a little bit. Okay, I don't know. We can mess around with the eye all, the, all day long, but as you can see, when you zoom out, you know, it's, it's starting to look okay. It's getting there, you know. But just by adding all the different shapes, blurring them, I'm just demonstrating right now, okay? You can start building up, okay? Building up. That's not too bad, right? Okay, let's talk about the mouth. And the ear. Woo. Ears are hard. I would use the same kind of technique with the blurring, okay? The blurring of shapes. Okay, I'm going to actually start with a new layer. Let's call it nose. Okay, let's go for it. We're doing it for Johnny. We're doing it for Johnny. So, let me hide this for now. Okay, so with the nose, it's a little bit different, difficult um, because there's a lot of different colors going on. So what I might do is add one kind of gradient mesh shape, try and get that to blend, and then the highlights and the dark areas as separate shapes like I did with the eye. Okay, again, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make kind of a big shape like I did with the major face, but make it a nose kind of gradient mesh nose, and then... The things like this highlight right here, the highlight that goes down around here, I'm going to make as a separate shape. So here we go. I'm going to kind of go and, and give myself a basic shape for a nose, go, going all the way up to the eyebrow area there, all the way down, all the way down. Don't worry about the underneath the nose, it could be a separate shape there. I'm going to go all the way back up here, kind of going towards the dark area here, and then give it a down around here, and then around. Whoosh. It looks ugly. It's okay. No stress. Okay? You got to start somewhere. Okay? You got to start somewhere. Okay, as you can see, it's in its own layer right here. Okay, so again, there were some dark areas along the side. Let's let's get the other um, other one over here. I'm going to bring this 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 photo over a little bit. If I can, oh, I locked it. I think I'm going to try and bring the other photo over. So it's a little closer, so I can see kind of the stuff at the same time. There we go. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. Okay. Here we go. So again, I did my technique here. I'm gonna. Uh, of course, there's a dark line that goes along the edge there. I'm gonna put a mesh right along there. Notice how sometimes it'll follow it. Uh, you might need to adjust the handles for the mesh like that. So again, this is gonna be a dark color. I'm gonna dive on in there and start giving me my dark color here. Um, it's kind of really kind of dark. Whoosh! That looks not very good, does it? Oh, this is all messed up here. It's it's this part here, yeah. We're going to have to... I'm going to have to do the shape over. Sorry. That little curve here is going to mess everything up. Okay, when you do gradient mesh, it needs to be smoother. So don't try and do a, a kind of a loop like that and meshes the gradient mesh. Let's try again. I'm going to start again. Start again. 
going down, around. Mm. Don't do the loop. There's the nose. Okay. Let's try again. We're going to try again. Medium color. Okay, again, I'm going to try and make a mesh along the edge here. That's much better. Okay, so then let's add some darker colors in there. Okay, and then of course we have a brighter color, kind of right here. We'll go with a, a, the lighter color there. Better. Then um, let's go with a really dark edge here. These ones all have to be dark. That's not going to work. How come these ones don't? This one needs to be dark. Go with a really dark. And then this one was dark too, right? No, that was the wrong one. I wanted this one. No? I can't choose that. I want this one. Okay, almost ready to, to to blend. This one just jumps to this one, doesn't it? Every time I try and click this one, it jumps to this one. Don't know. Okay, let's try and get it to blend with the gradient mesh that's underneath it. So again, here's the biggest problem with trying to mesh over top of a mesh, is trying it, getting it to blend. And if you click like that, see how it looks like it's just glued on there? Look at that. It looks like it's glued on there. So how can I get this to work? Probably the easiest technique is to use the eyedropper again and suck up the color that's right behind it. So if I click on the mesh here and I go and I click on one of the colors, I can use the eyedropper and suck up a color that's right next to it. Now if I look at it, see how it blends a little better? In addition to getting the color that's next to it, one of the things you can do with a gradient mesh is not necessarily blur it, which would work, but it, everything's starting to get a little bit too blurry. You can actually go to the transparency option in the gradient mesh. There is a transparency option, and in that transparency option, you can actually reduce the transparency of that dot right there. So it has a transparency of its own, so it blends with what's underneath it. See how it's getting closer? Okay. Again, using the gradient mesh, you can use the eyedropper to suck up a color that it's next to it, as well as add a gradient to it. So it starts to blend with the one underneath it. Okay. So for this, then uh, of course there is a gradient mesh under here. I'm probably going to have to add another one here. Let's add another one right about there. Ooh, that's pretty dark. We don't want that dark. We want it to be a little bit brighter. There we go. So not necessarily changing the one on top, but changing the one underneath it to blend with the one on top. How about that? Okay, then again, over here, this is going to probably have to do the same thing. This is going to be the color. Oh. Let me see if I can get in there a little deeper. There we go. So again, you can do basic shapes. Okay. So how do you how do you think that looks? It's a good start, right? 
So it takes a lot of time and technique. Again, selecting the colors right, right next to it. And I'm just demonstrating right now. Again, you can use the transparency and it still looks like it's glued on there but it's getting close okay so the techniques again are getting trying to get the colors the same this probably would be better if it's over top of this right this nose probably needs to be underneath this shape right here so we might need to bring this actually nose piece into this layer here put it underneath there there we go and it no oh, I want bright out oh, second it's still not exactly and then of course the last thing I would do is blur it a little bit or give it a feather so the edges are soft so that's a good start the eye looks good the nose needs a lot more work but it's not too bad okay uh, let's do lips for a moment okay so uh, now I know he has a finger on his lip there but um, let's just talk about different lip techniques um, and then we'll do hair because hair is always a challenge okay okay let's talk about uh, lips for a moment um, one way that I've done lips before is using the gradient mesh one of the things, if, if you think about the banana that we did, remember the banana? So, giving your lips a certain color then if you remember the banana, if you click right in the middle it should hopefully give you this kind of line that goes along it like this which you then can go and give yourself a highlight like that. Okay, so almost like the banana technique gives you a good base of color for the lips like that where you have this kind of highlight in the middle so again trying to get the gradient mesh to go right along the middle there and give you that and then the last thing for for that if you notice there's like a little wet kind of looking um, um, parts to the um, the lips uh, giving yourself a brush okay and using a brush kind of going like, oh, not that kind of brush. We want to do the, not calligraphy brush. We want to do, um, why? We want to do a brush. Why is my brush options not showing up? Why am I not, why is it? Okay, give me brush. Brush. Okay, keep selecting the wrong things is the problem. Okay, brush. So use the this brush, the charcoal brush. Okay, and there's different types of charcoal brushes, but again, you could kind of follow the line in a in a kind of a curved angle like that. And then, of course, selecting them. and then making them white oops I missed one and then give them uh, um, a transparency and possible blur small a little bit of blur but again following kind of the contour of a lip like that it's a little much. Probably blend it a little bit more. But that will give you somewhat some highlights and then of course really dark areas. You want to give some really dark 
dark colors to some of this. Exaggerate it a little bit. One of the things to keep in mind is when you print things in, in a color printer, the uh, this kind of thing will stand out even more. The um, the kind of things glued on top. So um, just be wary of that. Um, but if you look, you know, the gradient mesh can be a very good realistic starting point. You can use it as a combination of, uh, um, um, you know, gradient mesh with shapes and then blurring those shapes, just like we did with the eye. Let's do hair. Okay, now there's a couple different techniques for doing hair. Um, one of them is is if you look at some of them, people don't you don't need to go into too much detail with hair. Hair can just be um, kind of a a, a a lump of shapes with some spiky areas. So especially with Elvis's hair, it's, it looks like it's very difficult to do because he's got such great hair, right? Okay, so I would probably do the 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 whole cutout, and it looks like this has been cut out anyways. But this photo has definitely been cut out. You notice how this photo has had some um, some issues already. Look at that. So again, I would probably um, start by just making a shape. And here we go. There we go. Okay, and then the technique I want to show you is to paint inside a shape. Paint inside a shape. And that's something I don't believe we covered yet. So um, it's a very, uh, this is a technique that I wanted to show. And the painting inside a shape here. And let me hide this for right now. Okay, so let me give that a nice um, medium black color here, I guess. Black is the color here. Let's do a little bit dark, not super black. Okay, so I'm going to use a brush, but the brush is only going to paint in this shape. I'll show you what I mean. If I select the shape as it is right here, you'll notice down here that you have these two little, these little options down here. Okay, they're right here at the bottom of the toolbar. This is normal painting. This paints inside a shape, and this one of them paints inside, and one paints outside. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to use the brush, but when I use the brush, I'm going to go way over top of the shape, but it'll only go in the shape. I'll show you what I mean. If I go to this one right here, I think it's this one. No, let's draw behind this one. Draw inside shape, the very end one right here. It's the very end one right here. I'm going to go to my brush. I'm going to give myself a, a, um, a nice, why is my brush not showing? Oh, it's because I have it selected. Just wait. Let me get my brush first. Uh, oh, it keeps giving me that. Hold on. As I select the background, it thinks I want to do image. Let me lock these again. There we go. That'll save me. And let me get my brush. Oh, there's my brush there. I'm going to change the size to a little bit bigger. How about a six? Okay, and then I'm going to choose a color. little brighter color and um, and I'm gonna go all the way across like that notice how it just draws inside there so if you draw and you you know this is way to keep it inside the shape now this isn't probably the best way and I'm gonna do a different brush but this is one way to get some nice kind of shapes okay notice how it's only going inside the shape so even if I go crazy like that, it only draws inside the shape. Again, it's this one right here on the end. Let's do some hair using an art brush. Okay, here's another technique for doing hair. And actually, probably the best hair is if you download the hair off the internet. So I'm going to go and steal some hair off the internet because the hair on the internet is woo, the best hair ever made. Okay, so go to Google. I'm going to go to Google. And we're going to type in Illustrator 
hair brush and um, this one right here this is the best breast hair brush ever invented okay so we need to download it Where is it? Here it is, this one. I need the Illustrator file, not the, not the JPEG. You need an Illustrator file. How do I get the Illustrator file? I'm just demonstrating because that's what I'm doing. There is a, you need the JPEG, oh jeez, I guess, okay. Hold on, let me see if I can find the uh, correct, really? Oh, here it is. It's a free illustrator. Really? Hopefully this is not a virus. No, really? I want it the Illustrator file. Okay, I, I'm gonna have to search again. Let me go, let me go back to Google. Oh, really? I used to have it on my computer. I, I, it's it's in the computer somewhere. It's this one. Ah, it just keeps going here. Oh, I don't want that. Let me see if I can download it. No. Where? This one right here? No, oh, this looks like a virus. This is definitely virus here. You think this might be it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let me see. It's a zip file. Okay. We'll take our chances. Because it's such good hair. Cross our fingers. Okay, we'll delete it quickly. Okay, it looks like it worked. Okay, so to use the hairbrush, you can open it in Illustrator. Um, you can choose it. It becomes actually, um, if you open it in Illustrator, it'll actually be one of the brushes in the uh, brushes window. If I can find brushes, B for brushes. Oh, here they are. And so in the brushes, you go to um, Open Brush Library, I want to help. Hairbrush. I'm just demonstrating right now. Okay, so once you open it in Illustrator, if you go to the brush options here, Open Brush Library, you can actually open it here where it says Illustrator Hairbrush right here. So once you have it open, you should be able to take advantage of it in the brushes window. And so this brush is really good. It's basically a, a hair 
brush and so you choose it just like you would any other asset again I have this turned on right here so it's only gonna paint inside there and so if you choose the brush it'll follow along like that so you can see it uses it as an art brush so it can do a swirly like that okay and again it's only going inside where I have drawn and I know this is not the best uh, looking hair for Elvis because it's too blonde and gray. Uh, maybe this one would have been better. Uh, if you want to make your own hairbrush, um, I would just use the pencil tool, the pencil tool. And uh, you can just draw some lines, add some color draw some lines oh, actually turn off the um, keep selected nope that's not working because I have this turned on let me go back to normal mode here draw some lines 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 draw some lines, draw some, whatever, you get the idea. Draw a bunch of lines for hair, change their colors, I'm just demonstrating right now, I'm just demonstrating, I'm just demonstrating right now, you have to wait till I'm done. Okay, you get the idea. I'm making a bunch of different colored lines. Okay, so once you have all your lines kind of drawn the way you want, to make it into an art brush, um, you select it, and you go to the brush library, and you can either drag it into the brush library or you can hit next to the little trash can in the brushes window next to the trash can right here if you click on that it'll ask you what kind of brush you want the technique I was using was called an art brush where it paints the lines as long as you hold it down when you hit OK it's gonna ask you what direction and notice there's a little arrow so this is the way I want it you don't want it going across like like that because then it'll paint. Hey, this works good for stubble if you want to do facial stubble doing it that way. But you want to go this way, right? Okay, once you go that way, you can say stretch to fit the stri stroke length, which means as long as you hold the brush down, it'll drag the lines as long as that. And if you hit OK, you can then, it'll show up over here. Uh, I'm going to click off. I'm going to go to my brush. I'm going to have it selected there. And then again, you can draw, as long as you draw, it'll give you that kind of look. So that's one way to do hair, okay? Bunch of little lines, make it an art brush. Now for Elvis's hair, this looks horrible, right? So probably what I would do is not use any of those techniques that I just showed you, okay? I would probably, um, just very simple um, of course I'm gonna do this real quick put his shape the way that it is I'm doing this quick here whatever give that um, give that a color dark color and then just um, give myself some shapes over top of it. If you look, he has some highlights. So again, just using the pen tool, kind of give it, you know, some some kind of sharp, kind of zigzag kind of lines. And then give it a different color. If I could get my eyedropper in there and then even give it a, a different color so something like that and then 
of course, another shape. And then one more different color. So two colors, a little brighter color. There you go. And then just do that all over his hair, certain way, maybe wavy ones like it is there. You know, kind of following this. I mean, you could probably even do it over here, you know, over top of this. You could probably just go over here. And so, again, you know, you would just... You know, just like you did with the face before, you know. And then just, it would take some time, but that would do some hair. I don't know. This is the gradient mesh technique. I don't know. I'm going to stop now.